G'day Ice Cream Lovers, Steve Christensen here, the Ice Cream Bloke, self-appointed headmaster, look, on another Scoop School field trip. Look, this is what it's like to be the world's most renowned ice cream um, personality. I actually don't know whether I'm the most renowned ice cream personality, that's yet to be decided. Anyway, we're here in the UK for the Ice Cream Alliance uh, trade show, the Expo. Biggest ice cream trade show in the UK. We're pulling people from Scotland, from Ireland, all around the UK. Uh, they come to central UK here in Harrogate. Uh, I say Harrogate, they say Harrogate. Beautiful little town. Uh, I really would recommend coming, it's fantastic. Anyway, we're gonna spend uh, the next couple of minutes roaming the show, looking at what's new in the show, and a couple of episodes uh, following as well. So, uh, welcome to Harrogate and welcome to the ICA Ice Cream Expo. So one thing you'll find here in the UK is that the ice cream market is heavily influenced by Italy, Europe and gelato. As we come down one of the traditional, I guess, ice creamery uh, supplies here, we've got Mech 3 on this side, we've got Pre-Gel on this side, and you'll kind of see as we go down this kind of beautiful uh, display of gelato and gelato type products. Again, we've got a lot of uh, product here that is beautifully decorated, extremely rich in flavor because it's lower in fat. You've got about 4% fat, um, which means that the air is lower and the flavor really comes through uh, through a reduced fat product. As well as being reduced fat, you've got lower air or overrun, meaning that you don't have as much air and fluff to kind of have flavor push its way through as well. Honestly, you don't see too many three gallon buckets, the round buckets here that are traditional in the US. You've got this plethora of what we would call a Napoli or a five liter, five quart pan. Uh, some of the back, they're a little bit more shallow. They're eight liters. Again, beautiful when you go into a traditional UK ice cream parlor, this is the kind of product that you're seeing. So, winner of the best new product this year, and again, new products. I love coming to the show to see new products. This is a company called Fugar, based out of Italy, very close to Rimini actually, and it shows you that this uh, vegan non-dairy process is very, very strong all throughout Europe and the UK. So what we've got here is a gelato or a frozen dessert based product that's using a powdered base. So with this powdered base, you're using basically water, this powder, and a little bit of this product here. This is an extra virgin olive oil. They extract this out, it has no of the, none of that olive oil kind of uh, smell or flavor, but you're adding this product to give your frozen dessert its richness and the fat. The pistachio that we had yesterday was incredible. So we're gonna do more. We're actually gonna get some of this sent to our facility at Scoop School, run some product, but I think this is a great product. And again, just kind of reiterates this growing process and growing uh, fascination with non-dairy vegan products in the frozen dessert industry. Fuga. Look at this, this is childhood memory unlocked. This is a Flake 99. This is more than likely one of the most decadent chocolates you will ever, just look at the cross section of this. It's basically chocolate folded by angels and compressed. Now a staple for ice cream mobile as ice cream vans in the US is to pop one of these little bad boys into your uh, soft serve cone much like I'm dipping this into my mouth right now. I don't know what the likelihood is of us taking a box of these home. <laughs> However, it's one of the most delectable, I don't know whether you'd call it an ingredient in a soft serve cone or a garnish. My daughter calls it activity food. You can dip your flake into the cone and eat it that way. But flakes are honestly some of the most beautiful 
uh, chocolate that you'll ever come across. And the beauty of it is that they put it right into that humble soft serve cone to basically ritz it up a little bit. Cadbury Flake, the Flake 99. Ice cream lovers, another great thing about coming to these expos is demonstrations. I've got Eddie Scott behind me here, top chef consultant, worked with Gordon Ramsay. He actually yesterday made one of the most fascinating banana splits, curry inspired. It was absolutely amazing. So again, education balanced with vendors, balanced with ice cream. It's just a perfect combination for a uh, a business like yours to basically come, learn, taste, talk to experts, it's incredible. Another thing you'll find about the UK is that there is a much higher percentage of farmers, dairy farmers, that are actually using their milk to make ice cream. And so some of this equipment you don't typically see at a show in the US or in most ice cream shops. And we've spoken a little bit about continuous freezers before. Again, I don't want to go over that per se, but a lot more continuous freezer action here at the show in the UK. One piece of equipment that you don't see quite often is this high shear powder blender. Now again, most ice cream shops don't have the need for it because they're buying their mix in a bag. But if you've got to add either a stabilizer or a cocoa powder to a continuous feed, and you're bringing in your white mix, your milk, your cream, you need something very, very efficient to basically blend powdered products into your ice cream mix and that's what this is for so you're basically dropping your stabilizer emulsifier blends you might be using cocoa or some other powder you drop it in the shearer in this pipe down below it's basically feeding or shearing that powder as it goes through the system so you don't have any kind of lumps at the end it's um, a pretty great piece of equipment to look at it's beautifully made uh, and again something that we don't often see in uh, the US one of the great aspects of the show here is basically the ice cream competition. Similar to the one we have in the US, they're pulling all ice cream makers, all different uh, streams of, uh, whether you're gelato, premium ice cream, whether you're a mobiler, whether you've got soft serve, wherever you are in the realm of the Ice Cream Alliance, all comes down to here. Now we're gonna get um, a different video talking specifically about the process, but I, don't mind saying I have been asked to judge the champion of champions this afternoon. I'll have my white coat on, but again, a big part of the show here is the ice cream competitions. Keep an eye out for a separate video where we will see who will be judged the champion of champions of the Ice Cream Alliance in all of the United Kingdom. So one of the <laughs> one of the great things about- Who do about, I look at? Yeah, well, you can look at anyone you want. <laughs> one of the great things about the show is is it running into, look, good old English characters. Yeah. This is John James, been in the industry how long, mate? 40 years. Only 40? Yeah, I got proof here to show you, if you like, photographs of my early seminars. <laughs> now, okay. This is real history, I tell you. Real. Is that when you had the penny farthings running the... Yes, uh, <laughs> yeah. You would think that we're talking about ice cream, but John and I have just had a bit of a heated argument about cottage pies, because I thought I had a cottage pie last night. You corrected me and said that I had a shepherd's pie. Well, it depends what meat was in the pie. Right. Lamb is for shepherds, and cottage is for beef. Right. Well, what if it was a lamb and beef? That's complicated. <laughs> I just love coming to the show here because, because you think you're going to start talking about ice cream, then you get into this heated blue about pies, and next thing all hell break loose. We are going to pop over to your stand, John, and have a bit of a look at a potting machine. Yeah. Are you going to see the history that I've got to show you? If you want to show me the history, but I don't think we've got enough time. It's history. only 40 years. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Morley Harry, special advisor to the Ministry of Health, said back in the whenever this was, that mobiling ice cream is a really safe way to provide ice cream. And there's a real cultural um, uh, a love of the mobilers. And so you'll find in the UK that there's this kind of balance between those ice cream shops, the brick and mortar shops that are making their own ice cream, versus the mobilers. They actually have their own association, believe it or not. And this just shows kind of the heritage of the, the mobilers in this country that have really been the backbone of ice cream sales in the UK and all around.
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a whiz around the show. We've eaten flakes, we've looked at uh, olive oil, gelato, lots of things happening here. We've got more coming as we talk about pint fillers, the ice cream competition, bunch of other stuff. So thanks for joining us. The link for the Ice Cream Alliance is actually down below here. So click on that, have a look around. Again, great resource for ice cream, frozen dessert, gelato makers retailers all throughout the UK. I still find it um, fascinating to kind of continue to do the research, even if you're based somewhere else in the world and watching this. See what they have to offer. There's international memberships as well. So signing off from Harrogate in the UK, the ICA Ice Cream Expo, as we always say, keep on scooping. We'll see you in the next video.